But first, there it is, the famous foreboding Tower of London. For 900 years, the Tower of London has stood on the banks of the Thames. As a royal palace, a fortress, and a state prison, its ancient walls have seen the best and the worst of English history. King Henry VI died here. Queen Anne Boleyn died here. The boy King Edward V died here. And Bud Abbott lives here. What does it feel like to be a resident of one of the most famous places in the world? What do you mean, one of the most famous places in the world? I'm terribly sorry. We must introduce you to our aged friend, the Axe, the most famous place in the world. Bud Abbott is one of the tower's famous guardians, officially a yeoman warder, better known to us tourists as a beef eater. He and his wife Sue, along with 36 other beef eaters and their families, live and work within the tower. So when you first come here, I suppose I, I experienced, and I know I'm not alone amongst the wives in this, for about six weeks you f feel a prisoner until you get used to it. You know that you are locked in at night and you can't get out. We sleep safely at night as safe as the crown jewels. Out there, anything can happen. We don't care. We are here. We are not allowed out after midnight. One of the limitations of the job which we quite happily accept. Early each morning, Bud Abbott, barracks resident, dons his 16th century uniform and becomes Bud Abbott, custodian of the tower, royal bodyguard, and keeper of the crown jewels. With four million visitors a year these days, the beef eaters guard the tourists as much as they do the tower. We walk out in the morning, look across to the ticket office, and there is the queue. And it runs right round to the front, 60, 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 people queuing up to get in. They're ours, and we are theirs. Welcome to the Tower of London. This is not a museum or a group of old buildings ready to be demolished, as you might think. These are the buildings which, more than any other, are sought to contribute to the very destiny of English history. From 9.30 to 5 each day, the Tower belongs to the tourists. Over to your right, please. A couple of minutes and then down the traitor's gate. Come on, my gang, move right in, pretty girls. But at five o'clock, the tourists leave, and we witnessed a remarkable transformation. The shadows start to lengthen across Tower Green. Quiet descends. In the sudden emptiness, it's easy to conjure up memories of the Tower's bloody past. Soon, the gates will close. Bud and his fellow beef eaters will be locked in for the night, the ghosting hour. Not even the cynical are immune to apparitions. Do you believe in ghosts? If I didn't live at the Tower of London, of course I wouldn't believe in them. But it's rather different here, you know? When everyone's gone home and it's quiet and, and dark and the wind's blowing the leaves off the trees and a little bit of chains clanking, wind whistling through the arrow slits. Oh, that's different. I don't look behind me very often, I assure you. The prisoners of the royalty were brought down the river under the old London Bridge turned in under the Traitor's Gate archway here, up the steps, and through the archway, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey, Sir Thomas More, Archbishops, Lords, Dukes, Earls, here they came up here. Because the royal family and the doomed prison were brought in through this archway, this probably accounts for the fact that over the past couple of hundred years, centuries, army people coming through here in the middle of the night on patrol have felt a sudden overwhelming feeling of terrible evil. And there's been a bitterly cold breeze blow through here, even blowing their capes up over their heads. And they come through here, and on occasion they've noticed a shadow of a huge axe moving right across the face of the white tower, silhouetted against the darkness of the, of the black sky. Now do be careful of these spiral steps. 
watch your step as you go up the spiral stairway because halfway up is a step which is double the height of the others. Why? Well, because if you were fleeing and you were running down the steps, then you wouldn't expect the extra deep one you would fall and surely break your neck. Ooh, there certainly doesn't seem to be a shortage of ways to break your neck around here. Tell me about the two little princes. Well, the two little princes, the one was twelve, the other was nine, and their uncle, the Duke of Gloucester, was looking after the country because the other boy was far too young to rule. And he brought the two little boys here and held them in the bloody tower. And they were seen around for a few weeks and then no longer seen. Murder? Well, their bodies were never found. Reports have been made of uh, sightings of their little ghosts drifting through the corridors here in the cold stone rooms of the bloody tower. Two little pitiful creatures, still with their white nightgowns on. I don't think anyone is really scared of seeing them. Just, I don't know, just terribly, terribly sorry for them, I suppose, really. And I feel sorry for those who spend their nights guarding the tower, and perhaps guarding the ghosts. October 1978, round about midnight, the sentry on duty here, patrolling along the roadway, and little stones hit his feet and one actually hit his leg. Rather perturbed about this, he changed places with the sentry at the other side there, and he too was subject to the same treatment. It seemed that the stones were being thrown from the top of the battlements up there. There's no way onto the top of the battlements there, except through that door up there, which has got a wooden door securely locked, and outside it, an iron barred door, equally locked. And because the stones were very small, and, the wind, and there was no wind whatsoever, it's absolutely impossible for anyone on the other side of the wall to throw the stones over an eight-foot thick wall in order to hit the feet of a moving sentry. Nobody knows then where those stones came from. And when I spoke to the sentry the next day, he was so convinced that he told me all the details, and he said, and here are the stones, because I picked them up. And there they are. You see them? Who or what held those stones before the sentry picked them up? I don't really want to find out. I think it's time to go. Thank you very, very much. It has been an awesome experience, I assure you. I'm just curious. The gates are about to close for the night. You're going to be locked in here. What is it like for you being locked in here with all of your friends, as it were? <laughs> These people you've been talking about. Well, when the gates do close, then the Tower of London is all ours. And we resume our place in English history. Thank you, and uh, I'll leave before the gates go. Good night. And remember, the ghosts of the Tower of London don't really care whether you believe in them or not. And anyway, you shouldn't really laugh at ghosts. You might be one yourself someday. <laughs> <laughs>